The next step is to add and categorise some products. Essentially, if you think about your printed restaurant menu, each item from the menu needs to be added as a separate product in WooCommerce. You can have options for each product. So let's say you're selling pizza, you might have large, medium or small, nine inch, 13 inch, whatever. You might also, and we'll look at this in a minute, want to add extra options like um, add extra toppings or choose stuffed crust or something like that. So I'll show you how to do all of that. Before we start adding products, we're going to categorize our products because that helps you to keep your menu more organized. If you think about your printed restaurant menu, it's almost certainly divided into multiple categories. You might have sections for starters, mains, sides, drinks, kids, whatever. So that's probably how you want to structure your online menu as well. To do that, you go in the WordPress admin to products and then categories. And you want to add all the different categories. Uh, you can see that I've added some here starters, mains and desserts, and I'll show you how to do some more as well. Let's add a sides category. So I type sides as the name and then keep the slug fairly self-explanatory like sides lowercase. That just affects how it appears in the address at the top of the website. And then add new category. That will then appear in a minute as you'll see when you create your product so that you can categorize them. Now we'll add our first product. So we'll go to products, add new, and I'm going to add a pepperoni pizza. I'm going to add a description. Uh, that will probably be similar to whatever descriptive text you've got on your paper menu that you print off. And then you can select a category. So these are the product categories that we added a minute ago. And the only other thing you need to do at this stage for a simple product is to set the product image. So I've added one here. You can also upload files from your computer to the WordPress media library. So you set the image. Then of course you need to add a price. So I'm scrolling down to the product data section. If it's a simple product, which means it's one product, one price, no options, then we might add the price here. However, I don't want to create a simple product. That's too easy. Let's create a variable product which has a large and a small option. To do that, we're going to select variable product instead of simple product. And then we go to the attributes tab. And you can, if you want to be able to group products um, by attribute for whatever reason, then you might want to create them globally. It can, doing it globally can also save you time to be fair. So if you just um, set them up globally, you can then easily select large and small, for example, uh, here. But I don't have any global attributes, so I'm just going to add them for this product. So you can either do it here or just on the individual products. So I'm going to go add and I'm going to call it size and let's go for nine inch and then you separate with one of those vertical pipe things and 13 inch. So that gives me two pizza sizes. I'm going to untick visible on the product page just to keep things clean and simple. And I'm going to tick use for variations, which is really important. And then we click save attributes. So now we have a size attribute with two values, nine and 13 inch. Next, we need to convert these into product variations so that people can actually select nine inch or 13 inch when they buy my pepperoni pizza. I do that on the variations tab. So I click the add variation drop down, and I want to create variations from all attributes. There'll be a warning, which WooCommerce always does. You just click OK on the warning and it tells you that it's added them. Um, so it then warns you that they don't have prices, which is correct. So that's good. We will enter the prices now. So let's add a price for the nine inch and the 13 inch. And then we scroll a little bit further and click save changes. So you can see there's loads of options like sale prices and all this stuff and shipping options and things, but we're keeping it really simple. We've just created the products, 
created some variations which have names and added some prices and that's what you need really to sell uh, you don't necessarily need all this other stuff but it's there if you want it which is good to know and then we're going to click publish So that's how you add a choice of options, like a drop down where you can choose size. And if you wanted to create more advanced variations, you would add additional attributes. So let's say you wanted to um, have a size option or um, what else would you have for pizza? A crust option. So you might have a size drop down and you might also have a crust style where we have Italian crust or we have deep pan and that'll do. Um, so again, we'll untick that, we'll tick that and we'll click save attributes. And then we go to the variations tab and I want to create more variations, one for each possible combination of size plus crust type. The WooCommerce has now added all of those. So for each of my options, I've got the nine inch with Italian or deep pan, and I've got the 13 inch with Italian or deep pan. And I don't actually need the ones I created a minute ago. So I will just delete those. And then I need to make sure everything's got a price. If a variation doesn't have a price, it won't even appear. OK, and then we click Save Changes. So now when people buy my pizza, they will have two drop downs where they can choose the variation options. One will be a size drop down, one will be a crust drop down, and then they can combine those to choose the different combinations. Finally, I will show you a different type of product option. So, so far, we've looked at what you can do with WooCommerce as it comes. WooCommerce is free. If you pay for a, an additional plugin called product add-ons, then you can add different types of option, such as tick boxes um, to mark that it should be gluten free, for example, or uh, maybe you want to allow people to choose extra pizza toppings to customize their pizza and each topping might add to the price. You can't really do that with product variations or you kind of can, but it's not as user friendly as if you use things like checkboxes. You might also want customers to be able to write custom information like dietary requirements in a text field. So product add ons allows you to do all of that. I'm going to update my product now, save it. Then I'm going to install the product add ons plugin and I'll add a link to that below this video and then show you what additional types of option that will allow me to create. Let's go to plugins, add new. And if you've previously bought the plugin, you can download the zip file to your computer, which I have done. So I'm going to click upload plugin and then choose file. And I'm going to find the product add-ons plugin. Here it is, which I downloaded earlier and click open. And then I click install now and wait for the zip file to upload to my website and then click activate plugin. Um, you can create your add-ons globally by using create add-ons, but I want to add it to my pizza pepperoni. So I'm going to go to products and then I'm going to click on my pepperoni pizza. And I'm going to show you what the add-ons plugin can do that variations can't. And that's really popular for restaurants because of the need to have checkboxes and other types of option. That, um, so let's add a field. Uh, let's add multiple choice field. Um, what should we have? Should we have some radio buttons? And let's call it extra toppings. Um, you can make it a required field or you don't have to. So let's say double cheese. And that's an extra one. And let's add another option, which is gluten free, which might be an extra 50 or something. So we'll add those in. You can also add other add on types. So here, let's do some checkboxes now. Actually, it would have been better to use these for checkboxes. Um, instead of radio buttons. So 
let's go for the check boxes for that and then let's add a short text field here you can choose what they put in but for a restaurant probably you just want to say a birthday message I don't know how you do that on a pizza but never mind if someone wants to put a birthday message on it they can so that will add a text field so as you can see from all of these options um, the product add-ons plugin has a lot more options you could even use customer defined price to allow the customer to add a tip so if you do that then you could say add a tip and then that will add a box where the customer can add a tip uh, for that product and do it that way you might actually want to do this to create a completely separate tip product uh, which you would encourage everybody to buy so there's lots of options that you can use variations are pretty good if you want people to choose from drop downs and add-ons are good when you want other types like check boxes now you've done that I'm going to stop the video and add all the rest of my products and I'd like you to do the same on your own website and then we will come back for the next lesson in which we're going to start creating food order forms for our website.